Our first reading this morning comes from the Old Testament in the book of Psalms. And we read from Psalm 18, verses 28 through 36, as we hear these words of the psalmist. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, the Lord's way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. God shields all who take refuge in the Lord. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. God makes my feet like the feet of a deer. The Lord causes me to stand on the heights. God trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. And then our New Testament reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John in the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 22. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is God's holy word for us this day. As Lewis and Clark and the Corps of Discovery stood looking beyond the top of the Great Falls, all they could see was mountain peak upon mountain peak. This is what was shared from William Clark's journal. It was new country to the men. These were Easterners who had never seen such mountains, many of them covered with snow in midsummer. They had never been in a ravine this narrow with such steep cliffs on either side. The usual eloquent Meriwether Lewis has yet to find the language to describe the scene. As they contemplated the terrain that was ahead, the decision was made that they should travel by land, by horseback. The chief of the Shoshone Native American tribe had shared a land route, one that the Nez Perce took when they came east to hunt buffalo. The plan was to move north up the valley of the Lean High River, past the junction with the Salmon River, then across the mountains to the valley of the Bitterroot Mountains, and proceed north until they came to the trail across the Bitterroot Mountains to the land of the Nez Perce tribes. They had little idea how difficult that trail would be. The men now went about making pack saddles, repacking supplies, building a cache for materials that they did not need, sinking the canoes and preparing for the long haul over the mountain. By mid-August, the going got still rougher, rough enough to baffle even the horses. The rocks were so sharp, large, and unsettled, and the hillside steep that the horses could, with the greatest risk and difficulty, get on. I imagine that at least once, on the second half of this adventure, Lewis and Clark both looked back 
and remember the Shoshone chief's words about this geography. He began by delineating the rivers on the ground. The river that they had been on, he placed two branches just above, which he showed the openings of the mountains that were in view. Another river flowing into two smaller streams. And here the chief placed a number of heaps of sand on each side, which he informed them represented the vast mountains of rock, eternally covered with snow. The perpendicular and even jutting rock so closely hemmed in the river that there was no possibility of passing along the shore. The bed of the river was obstructed by sharp, pointed rocks and rapids. This, they would discover, was the Salmon River, often called the River of No Return. The chief said that this was the state of the country in that direction, but neither himself nor none of his nation had ever been further down the river than these mountains. Now they were experiencing some of what the chief had shared with them, passing through very rough country, not on any map, nor familiar territory for any of them, including their Shoshone guides. They moved through thickets in which they were obliged to cut a road, over rocky hillsides where their horses were in perpetual danger of slipping to their certain destruction, up and down steep hills where several horses fell, some turned over and others slipped down steep hillsides, one horse crippled and two gave out. The next day was the same. They had a little to eat, nine pheasants with a little corn that made supper for the whole corps. They encountered hot springs, which provided needed relief, but hunting and food supplies became limited. They walked among prickly pear, mosquitoes and buffalo gnats were plenty, and there was a species of grass, the seeds of which had sharp points and bristles that got into their moccasins and were extremely painful. Come one September morning, they woke up to snow covering the ground, and their moccasins were frozen. This uncharted territory was off the map. They really had no idea what was ahead of them. It was all unknown. New tools were needed where canoes, river running skills, and more were no longer viable. Relying on a compass, and night sky were all that now were familiar. By foot and horseback, this new territory was explored, discovering that some days it was just putting one foot in front of the other. In so many ways, we have been off the map for close to two and a half years now. Ministry and life through the pandemic was filled with so many unknowns. Changing how we gathered and worshipped on the flip of a coin. Trying new ways of worshipping and experimenting on how we gathered. We had no choice. Either adapt and change or, well, the option was to do nothing which really isn't a viable option. So for several years, together we have engaged in creative experiments. When we were faced with so many unknowns and changes, there were two things we couldn't do. Do what we had been doing before the pandemic. Do nothing. Instead, our motto became, don't just do something, stand there, then do something. As we stand facing the Rocky Mountains like Lewis and Clark, we are no longer going to rely on our canoes either. 
We can't. Journeying off the map means we need new tools, new ways of trying out ministry and mission. We need to adapt by experimenting, trying new things of doing things, then evaluating and moving on. Either letting it go, adapting what didn't work and trying again, or stepping out with another experiment. Off the map, there are three key questions we need to ask ourselves, three questions we need to wrestle with together. The first, before we consider changing or adopting anything, we must first determine what is truly sacred. I think we have done this together over the years. We have learned our history over 112 years and have shared it. At least every year, even during COVID years, we have celebrated and shared our history, our story of resilience, of leadership, of people of God that not only built this building we call church, but remodeled it, maintained it, and grew it over time. We have celebrated the ministry and mission that got us to this place, standing before the mountains and discovering new, uncharted territory together. The second key question, we consider what ministries can we stop doing or let go of so we can free resources and energy for new forms of ministry. What do we need to celebrate for the impact it made in another day or circumstance that has outlived its usefulness? Or what do we need to set aside because there is no energy or interest in it any longer? The pandemic has helped us with that, whether we like it or not, letting go of old ways of doing things. Your session over the years has also let go of ministries or ways of doing things as they evaluate the ministry goals for the year and add new goals. Not easy work, but essential to the journey in new territory off the map. What on our list of dreaming and visioning do we have energy and joy around? A couple weeks ago, we spent time dreaming and visioning. We have a great list. And now we just narrow it down to those things that right now in this time and place we have energy and joy around. Some of those things might be on a list in the future. But just liking the idea while it's great. However, if we don't have some energy and joy around it, making it a viable ministry, then we need to leave it behind on the list for now. Everyone is invited to look over the list of dreaming and visioning and check off what you individually have energy and joy around. Check off as many as you would like and return the sheet to the back table. The third key question for us there are the essential parts of our congregation's identity, mission, and ministry that need to be adapted to a new day, environment, or opportunity. What needs to be created through experimentation? How can we keep doing things God calls us to do, but in a way that resonates, connects, serves, and challenges people who wouldn't otherwise pay any attention. What potential partners will create the possibilities of birthing something new? We have started on this, maybe without even realizing it. Over six years ago, 
we did some visioning together. And out of that experience was created the little library and the little pantry, brief classes, and Summer King's Kids Music Camp. We found our niche with Music Camp and have grown that ministry over five summers, including through COVID. The dream came out of our history, from the Kingdom Singers and the summer camp those youth led. Now we are offering a seasonal King's Kids Singers that will rehearse and share their music, bells, and instruments two times a year. We are currently serving our summer music camp families with great responses for a holiday concert this early December. Building upon what we are good at, where we can offer a ministry that no one else is, that families across the I-70 corridor are interested in, and that we have joy and energy around. The answer to these three questions are neither easy nor always clear. I imagine what one person considers essential, another person considers expendable. And even more, what one person suggests can be adapted or changed, another feels it must remain the same. What is essential, expendable, or able to be adapted? Hard questions without easy answers. But not asking these questions or not talking about them is not the answer. Doing that means we are canoeing without a river or up a creek without a paddle. The challenge is before us. Leaving canoes behind like Lewis and Clark and beginning the journey off the map means pausing to think about our church and congregation which gives us a framework for considering the challenges we face and at the same time, we need new creative experiments and relationships and purpose. Although the old solutions may have been good and effective once, many are now no longer a good fit. When we are experimenting with new solutions within our living community, we are doing so with something that has a history, is alive and precious, and must be handled with care. We, as human beings, don't really resist change per se. What we resist is loss. COVID has shown us that loud and clear. What we resist most <coughs> is the loss of normal, the loss of a way of doing things in the past. It is the loss, the grief and being off the map and the unknowns before us. We are being challenged to be creative, persistent, resilient, and able to make the future out of the parts and pieces of what we've got. We can do this. And the psalmist reminds us, God is our strength, our shield, our rock, our refuge. God arms us with strength for the journey. God makes our feet like the feet of a deer and causes us to stand on the high places. God provides a broad path for our feet so that our ankles do not give way. Our guide when our feet take us off the map. We recognize even deep in our hearts the sense of importance, opportunity, and even necessity of the challenge in front of us. And within all the challenges and tension, Christ reminds us with his powerful words, Peace be with you. My peace be with you. For the core of discovery off the map meant experimenting and trying new ways of doing things. 
They left the canoes behind, ventured forward with horses into uncharted and unmapped territory, where very few Native American feet had ever journeyed before. The same is true for us as the people of God in the church today, trying to find our way off the map, step by step, moving forward into new territory. Tools we are used to using are no longer viable. We can't open our church doors and expect young families, or anyone for that matter, to just show up, come in, and join us. The way forward is on a new path. There are no footprints to sink our feet into. This is territory off the map, with God as our compass, leading us and giving us direction for the path that God has already chosen. Now we must trust God, maybe in a way that makes every step into the unknown one wrapped with God's guidance, mercy, grace, and love. Together with God, we can tackle the mountain ahead that seems huge and challenging. For Lewis and Clark and for us, the greatest challenge ahead is that going off the map means seeing beyond the old maps and the assumptions of the past. We now need to trust God and go first. There we will see our ministry and mission again for the first time in a new way where we will raise and consider new questions. There we will find our center within new boundaries. We need to experiment, try out ministries and let them go if they are not a good fit and try again. We also need to escape the expert expectation, resisting change because it is change. Exploration challenges the expert expectation and even offers us an escape to declare and own that we are now in unchartered territory where there are no maps and few answers, allows us the freedom to innovate and experiment with new ways of doing ministry. We can do this with trust in our God as our guide and the peace of Jesus Christ our Lord as we step out into the unknown, which is totally and completely off the map. May it always be so.